Hi, Jamie here today at Teachers Tech. Today, I want to show you how to use Microsoft Loop. I'm going to break this into three sections, this video tutorial. We're going to first take a look at how easy it is to create notes. You're going to find it's a lot like OneNote with a lot of its features. Then we'll move into the true strength of Microsoft Loop, and that's collaboration, how you can work with teams, create team projects. And then lastly, I want to move into how it connects with other products in Microsoft 365. Let's get into this tutorial for beginners on how to use Microsoft Loop. So first of all, how do you access Microsoft Loop? All you really need is a browser. I'm using Microsoft Edge here today. You can use different browsers as well. I'll put a link to this page down below in this, the description so you can just click on it. Once you're here, you can go ahead and click Get Started or Log In. If you have a Microsoft 365 account, you can use the free personal account if you have one. If you log in with that, there are some limitations to that as well. I'll put the link to the limitations uh, down below in the description as well so you can check that out. I'm going to be showing from my browser here today, but you can also download from the Windows Store the app. So you can go just do a search for it and download Microsoft Loop to have the app on your computer as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and get started here and log in with my Microsoft 365 account. When you log into Microsoft Loop the first time, this is what you should be greeted with. This is a workspace as a demo they already created that gives you some good ideas of how to get started. And I'm going to go through a quick walk through this in a moment. I just want to point out in the settings up here, uh, we can change it to dark theme if we'd like. I'm going to leave it at system. I just wanted to point th that feature out. I'm going to go ahead and click on getting started and this workspace will open up. This is the name right here, getting started of that workspace. Inside it, we have a number of pages that are already created. You'll notice that under a page, there can be sub pages. On each of these pages, we have a header that can be changed. We have text that people are entering in. We can input things like video that will play right within this app. We can do other things if we wanted to have things like a table that we can quickly put in to help things get organized. If I wanted to have a checklist, we can add that so we can keep track of things. Now, this could be for yourself. You don't have to share this with other people, but this is great, as I mentioned, for co-creation. Something like if I click on next steps, you can see how they have a progress tracker here that you can make these quick changes uh, with just to let yourself know or if you're sharing it out, everybody know. Right? If I go to the top, you can see who has access to the page. Well, right now it's only me. I don't have to share this out with other people. You have that choice. I could share the entire workspace out with a group or other people, or I could share each page. If I click on here, you'll notice that we have access to all pages. So if I do this, then whoever I invite will have access, or I could just do page by page or a loop component. So you can really break it down on what you want to share out. If I go and hover over any of these pages, notice that we can create new pages in here. I could go ahead, duplicate pages, and we can make a share through this as well. Now I can go ahead and click the loop up top and it will bring me back to a place where I'm going to see all my different workspaces. I'm going to create one in a moment. I just want to point out this is just some basic organization. If you had a lot of, of workspaces, you can do a search. You can do a search for star. If I hover over this, if I wanted to star this, I could do this here. I could add members from this point as well or even delete this workspace. If you want to list mode, you can see how you can make those quick changes. Now I want to create our own workspace. I'm going to do that right through here and we'll get going through the steps by this. So let's start with giving this a title. I'm just going to be calling this the extraterrestrial earth expedition team and I'm even going to add an emoji. So I'm just going to click on here. I could go through. I even have this here that I'm going to use. If I didn't find what I want, you can do your search. So I'm going to add that as emoji. I think I need to update my cover as well. All these can, things can be changed later on. I like the search option in here, so I'll just go through. Hey, this kind of looks okay. I'm going to hit update. 
and let's go ahead and hit create and we're going to have our workspace created. I want to point out now that I have my second workspace there, if I do this right here, notice this is the getting started one. So I could browse, I switch between different ones. So if I go over to getting started, I've switched workspaces. And if I go back to loop, you'll see that we have our workspace here. Let's go ahead and start adding some pages and notes to this. Let's go ahead and add a title to this page and some customization. So this is just a blank page that I'm on, and I'm going to call this a Great Earth Landmark Scavenger Hunt. If I look at the bottom, you can see that it is on blank page. We can do quick templates if you kind of know specifically what you want. And on my second page, I will create one from a template. We also have the gallery. I'm going to add an icon just like I did before. We'll add this alien one and a cover. I'm just going to go with this option right here. So with this now, I can quickly add some content to it. So let's say if I go ahead and add this content here, notice when I add it, we have our move. So if I did want to move things around, I can. This is great for teamwork. If you are shared with other people, like I said, right now, I'm the only one with access. Uh, you can have reactions to this. So if I go ahead, uh, people within the team can react to each other or you can react to your own, just like I did here. If I go ahead and hit enter after, I want to point out a couple of the shortcuts here with the forward slash or the at mention. So if I go and hit the forward slash, this is where you can quickly add all of these different things. So it makes it very easy. They have them constructed. Then you just have to add the content to this. So as an example, if I was going to have a checklist here for a scavenger hunt, I can go through and add some more things now. And now that we have our list, we can start making the things checked off that we want. We can still do the move around just like I showed you before, or even the comments on any of these as well. If I want to add, let's say, a video to the page, I can just simply copy and paste. This will be a YouTube video link. So if I paste it right in, the video gets placed right inside this page on loop. I can watch it from this point. And if you want it to be gone, just if you're below it, if I hit backspace, it will delete. After a couple backspaces, it will delete it out. If I want to put, let's say, a picture in, if I just use my forward slash, at the very bottom, you're going to see image. I can select an image from my computer and place it in. This allows me to size it. Uh, if I grab the corners, you'll notice how I can start sizing the pictures inside here by pulling across. And if you do want this gone, if I have this selected, I can just go ahead and hit delete on my keyboard. Let's go ahead and make a second page. And I just want to show you a few more components that you can add in like a table. The at symbol allows you to find people, notify people. So if I go through and I have this shared with people, I can add them here or I can add a component. And later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an interactive component. To add a new page to this workspace, notice that we have the plus here. So we can add a page or a link. So if I select this, we have link or page. I'm going to create a new page. I do want to point out, if you wanted a sub page, take a look at these ellipses here. I can go ahead and create the new sub page so it would be underneath this one. I'm just going to make this a normal page up top. So when it goes to this here, I could do what I did before, do a blank page, or I could look below and choose a template. So if I go to template gallery, I can go through all the different ones that they have here. Now you can customize any of these once you uh, pick any of these. You can go through and get an idea of maybe some ideas to help you get started on a project that you're doing. So if I was going to go, go ahead and choose this one right here, and let's say I know I wanted a table, I can see this table's all set up. All of this table can be customizable as well. So if I hit use this table, it plunks it in very quickly into this. So you can see that they uh, don't have all the information that they uh, had an example because that was some just some filler that they had in. But now I can start from here. But if I want to add my cover or my icon, I can go back and do what I did 
before and add those things. We can go and change the names and delete this information. If I just go through and highlight multiple uh, rows of this and just hit delete on my keyboard, you'll notice how it, it starts to take away any of these spaces. So what I want to talk about here is the table because the table here works uh, very similar to something uh, in Excel. And I'll show you how you can customize this. As you can see, I just quickly added a title to this page. Let's go make some customizations to this table. I do want to point out, I could have started with just a table from scratch just by simply using the forward slash, going to table, and then entering in this way and making customizations. You can also use Control Z. So if I go Control Z, that undoes my last step. Now, if we look at the headings that they already have, in this case, this is owner. So this would be based upon a person of the group, uh, but I don't want this to be. I want this to be just text. So if I drop down here, I can change the type of the column. So I can go from text, number, date, you can see all the different options. I can even add a vote in here. I could start from scratch, as I mentioned before, but I'm gonna go and go here is gonna be just text. This one's going to be text. I'm going to leave this one as status. Date, I don't need a date on this one, so I'm going to just change this one back to text. And this one also will be just text. I can delete columns if I want to, too. So if I didn't want this one here, I could go ahead and hit delete. I'm going to go and change the names of these columns now. Just by clicking in, I can go and delete or I could put in my new information. If I get to a part where I want another uh, column inserted, I can go and hover up top here and just quickly add my column. And then you can see it defaults to text and I can add a, a title to it. If I want this to be in a different place, maybe the status at the end, I'm just gonna drag it to that place and it will shift places with this column. I went ahead inside this table and just completed it with more content. And I do have the status indicator on this one. So this allows me to go into any of these and click it off. The other thing I just want to point out, we can change the width of our columns. So just like in Excel, I can drag the width of the columns. I can even sort. So I can drop down and sort if I wanted them ascending or descending to change them up. You can actually even export this out to Microsoft Excel. If I just click on this, notice we have export here and it will open up Excel in a new tab. If you ever want a little bit more room on your pages, you can close the sidebar. If I go up top here and just hit close sidebar, you get a little bit more real estate. I'm going to open this back up. Let's say we have a couple pages now, uh, but we want to get ready to share it with other people too. Uh, you can go up top like I showed you before, and we can choose what we want to share. So if I drop down here and just let's say I'm going to share the workspace, I'm going to invite people to here. So I'm just going to have people within my organization that I can quickly add them to here. When I send them the invite, you're going to notice that right here where it says one workspace member, this will turn into three based on the different emails that I've added. Now I can go through and take people away if I want. I can just simply hover over, hit the X and remove through workspace. I'm going to go ahead and just close out now. And I just want to point out over here, you can see that there's three workspace members that I can access at any time. If I go back to share and look at page link, this is where you can set some customizations as well. Uh, right now, people in the organization with the link can edit, but you can change this. If you only want them to view, you can make that change here. Now take a look, you can pick people you choose, share with specific people you choose to inside or outside. Now make those changes to what you want and then just hit apply to them. Now, the last component about sharing is the loop component. Now, we have to make something a component, then we're able to share it. And I'll just come back to that in a moment. Now, I want to show you how to make a loop component and then share it with another Microsoft 365 app. We'll do this through Microsoft Outlook and in Teams. So if I take this table right here, and I'm just going to click in it, and I'm going to go ahead and just click this, I'm going to create a loop component. So a loop component makes it an interactive object. So I can send it and anything that happens will happen in live time will be updated. Now, since I made it a component, I'm just gonna share up top loop component.
component. Now at this point, once I've done this, I'm going to go through and make a copy of this component. So I just go ahead, click, it, co click copy. I'm going to switch over after it copies over to my Outlook. So I'm just using the new Microsoft Outlook and I'm just going to paste this in, control V. So I have this gets pasted in. I have people that I'm going to send it to and I want them to update it because they weren't going to loop to update. So I'll send this email away and then I'm going to open it up in the other person's account. So here is the email right here. And in the background, you can see I have the original one open. And notice that I can see this person is actually in the component because it is over here. So if I go in under this one and try to make a change uh, to add, maybe this wasn't completed and go off track, notice the quick adjustment it makes over here. So anything I type, so if I go and type something over here, notice that it's updating over here. So it's live interactive. Let's move over te to Teams and I'll show you how you can just simply paste this in. Now I've moved over to Teams and if I just go over to start a new post, I can go in, in the message, I'm gonna go and just paste this loop component in and hit post. And take a look underneath here, I'm gonna have this live component that's connected everywhere. So I could go post it and then the group can make those changes in here. So you can see a lot of uses with this being how it's connected to others. Now they are adding it more to, uh, they're gonna have it in Word and Excel as they come out. I believe it's in Word online, but they are rolling out to more Microsoft 365 apps. I just wanted to point out that there are loop components right inside the new Microsoft Outlook. So if you go up here, once you open a new create, start creating a new message, you can add these in here. So if you wanted to have a task list or a voting table, you can add any of these here and do your edits right in here, same way that I showed you before, and then send it out and then you're going to be able to get live updates to this. So take a look at that in the new Outlook. And also take a look at my 10 tips that I have for the new Microsoft Outlook as well. I'll place it up here. I hope this has given you a better understanding about what Microsoft Loop is and how you can use Microsoft Loop. Let me know what else you're interested in learning about Loop or other Microsoft products. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time with more tech tips and tutorials.